Welcome to Living Life on the Max with Keisha B. Spivey, a weekly podcast that will challenge you and encourage you to live your best life yet. Hello there. I'm so excited that you're joining us as we continue our discussion on dream killers. You know, I love to sit across the table from people and they talk about their dreams and their passions and their goals. And then fast forward a couple of weeks or a couple of months and I sit back across the same table from them and all of a sudden their pizzazz is gone. Their hope is gone. And what was a dream all of a sudden is gone. And that kind of led me to this series as we begin to talk about dream killers because they are real. Just like our dreams are real and our goals are real, there are things out there sent to literally destroy it, to attack it, to distract us and to derail us. And so last week we started this discussion on discouragement and discouragement is that thing that's so dangerous because it does not discriminate. And if we're honest, we all tend to dip down into that dark place from time to time, but we cannot stay there. And so we opened up this series on talking about how to move away from discouragement and how to even learn how to encourage yourself. You know, and I got to tell you, this wouldn't be in the word if we didn't need to hear about it. You know, Deuteronomy 31 8 says the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be dis- be afraid. Do not be discouraged. It wouldn't be in the Bible if we didn't need to know it. It wouldn't be in the Bible if we didn't need to be reminded from time to time of the dangers of discouragement. Today I'm picking up with dream killer number two and it's called disappointment disappointment. And if I had to define it, I would call disappointment the gap that exists between our expectation and our reality. Now, I believe everyone who's willing to be honest with themselves will admit they've fallen into that gap sometime or another. You know, maybe you found yourself living with some unfulfilled desires. You maybe had your hopes dashed with cold water, had something that you thought was a sure thing, moving from being a go to a no. You have been disappointed. And if we're honest, disappointments can damage us. You know, Mark Twain said, we should be careful to get out of an experience, only the wisdom that is in it, and stop there. Lest we be like the cat who sits down on a hot stove lid. She will never sit down on a hot stove lid again. And this is well, but also she will never sit down on a cold one anymore. You know, sometimes when things go wrong, we say, I'll never do that again. I'll never try again. I'll never risk again. I'll never love again. And what a mistake this is when it comes to things that limit our dreams. You know, when mistakes happen, you know, when disappointments come, we have to get perspective and we cannot allow it to keep us from pursuing the promises of God. You know, what if we allowed those disappointments to keep us off track and literally we deterred from purpose? You know, we have to just be realistic with ourselves and realizing that experiencing failure is the price tag you pay if you ever want to achieve success. Experiencing failure is the price tag. Sometimes you have to face it and overcome it more than once in order to move forward and pursue your dreams. But you got to be willing to face it. You have to be willing to fight through it. You have to be willing to rise no matter what. And as I started thinking about disappointments, I immediately started thinking of successful failures that I've read about over the years. You know, the first one that popped into my mind was Walt Disney. He was fired from the Kansas City Star because the editor felt he lacked imagination and they didn't think he had any good ideas. This is the person who found Disney World. They said he didn't have creativity. He didn't have any good ideas. And he was fired. You think about Stephen King, one of the most successful authors, and he wrote the book Carrie. And that book was rejected by 30 publishers. And he was told that his stuff would never sell. But he became a best-selling author. You think about Oprah Winfrey, who was told she was unfit for TV. She was told that she didn't have the look. She didn't have the sound. She didn't have the pedigree for TV. I wonder who's laughing now. Then you think about J.K. Rowling. That's the author of Harry Potter. By the time she had finished writing the first Harry Potter book, she was divorced. She was on welfare. She was a single mom and trying to figure out how to support her child. And she also was rejected by several authors, several publishers. What if she would have quit? 
Then there's one of my favorites. There's Colonel Sanders. You know, he was 62 years old with 105 Social Security check in his hand, running around the world, pitching his chicken recipe to restaurants. It was reported that 1,009 people rejected him and rejected what he was selling. So he started the first KFC. Come on now. These people were disappointed. Time and time and time again, I think it's fair that if we could argue it's rare for successful people to have a smooth run. So one of the prerequisites for success is some hurdles along the way that help us build our strength. It helps us build resilience and an intestinal fortitude to keep fighting for that thing that we won't. Disappointment is a part of the process. You can't allow disappointment to kill your dream. It should literally let you know you're on track and that deep down is something that you really won't. Now, I'm not suggesting failure is something we ought to be trying to do and we ought to be aiming for, but failure is a necessary part of life from time to time. And the best way to handle it is to learn from it. You know, disappointment comes with failing, but failing doesn't make you a failure. It does not. Failing is part of the process. I I tell my children often, every time I take a fall, I stretch out at least five feet and seven inches because when I get up, I'm going to at least be the distance I stand tall ahead of where I started. You have to refuse to allow disappointments to kill your dream. The question isn't whether or not you're going to be disappointed. The question is how are you going to deal with it when it knocks at your door? How are you going to handle it? Because it's going to come for you. It's going to, if you are aiming to do anything great, if you're aiming to overcome anything, if you're pursuing dreams and goals, goals you're going to be disappointed along the way. We got to stop acting surprised and shocked that it happened. It is a part of the price tag. So I just want to give you a couple tips. If you're sitting here listening to this and you've been dealing with disappointment, I want to give you some keys on how to move out of that thing, how to get back on top of that thing and not allow it to destroy your dream. Number one, attach yourself to the desire, not necessarily your goals. We often are disappointed because the outcome didn't look like what we expected. The outcome didn't look like what we wanted. We have to remember that the goal is a reflection of an underlying desire. It is merely one of the many ways to fulfill that desire. It's only one option. It's not the only option. So don't get so fixed on the goal that you miss the desire. Remember why you want what you want. Remember the outcome, not necessarily the process to get there. What's the intended outcome? What's your objective? What is the end game? So don't focus on the piece that just disappointed you. How about figure out a way to navigate that thing so you keep moving toward the desired end? Number two, acknowledge the illusion you hold of what you think reality should be. You know, many people have their mindset on what they think something should be, what they think something should look like, the way something should have happened, the way something should have been coming together. And when that thing doesn't happen, they don't know how to bounce back from it. So you need to imagine that maybe there was another end. If you believe that all things work out for your good, maybe there's another route you're supposed to take. You know, many people find themselves disappointed because they're hung up over what they thought reality would be like, feel like and look like. So if you're disappointed about something, that means you are harboring a certain perception on what it should be. That perception is not the truth. It's simply your lens on which you're seeing the situation, the lens on which you're seeing the world. And sometimes, you know, I wear reading glasses. I have to clean the lens. My my sunglasses, I have to clean the lens because if there's something on it that's distorting my view, then I'm not seeing clearly. So it really is okay to wipe the glass lens off and get a God perspective, to, to throttle back from what you're disappointed in or disappointed with and say, okay, I need to see the divine. God, help me navigate my steps. Help me get to the place you've called me to be. Maybe this wasn't the way you had for me. So give me eyes to see what you are, what you're, where you're taking me and ears to hear what you're saying. Number three is admit that you need growth. You know, disappointment can be a good thing because sometimes it represents an opportunity for growth. You know, many times we get disappointed because something, because of the way it, we view it as a setback. Something happens and we view it as we've missed out on something or we're now falling behind. We feel like we've taken a step back 
from what it should be and where we should be? You know, what if we flip the switch and saw the situation as an opportunity to be set up for greater, to be set up for better, to be set up for more? Change your perspective. See it as an opportunity to grow and to go. Stop seeing it as something that's taking you backwards. When you are realizing that these disappointments are real and you take personal responsibility from for how you can move forward and what you can do, then you just got to make the decision to do it. You know, you can't let disappointments dictate your attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. So the longer you stay in disappointment and self-pity and the longer you feel sorry for yourself, the more time it's going to take to get to that place that God has for you. You know, dealing with disappointment is definitely not easy. But you can move past it. You can get past that thing. You can get past that feeling. You know, when you start living past your disappointments and getting more and more focused on living in line with your desires, you begin to make progress. Yes, I am a big goal setter. I am. I believe you need to have a blueprint. I think if you don't have a date on it, you don't have a plan with it. It's just a wish. So I do want to encourage you to continue to set goals. Let those goals drive you forward. But don't attach your identity to those goals. When you attach your identity to them, you fall in the trap of associating your existence with them. And you got to remember your goals are just external outcomes. They're external objectives. They are not permanent fixtures in your life. Life isn't just about reaching goals. It's about living life on max. It's about living life to the fullest. It's about becoming everything that God has ordained you to be. It's about accomplishing everything that he sent you to earth to achieve for his glory. So you got to refuse to allow disappointments to steal your dream. When you fall down, stretch forward. Put your arms way out. And when you get up, take the lessons you've learned in the process with you and just do better next time. One of my favorite quotes of all time is by Maya Angelou. And it's when you know better, you do better. Let that disappointment be something that teaches you how to do better. Let that disappointment be your tutor. Let it teach you on which way doesn't work. On something else you need to try. On being creative another way. Thinking outside of the box. Let that disappointment teach you. Don't let it kill your dream. Let that disappointment remind you that there's something worth fighting for. That the enemy would love for you to sit down in this pity party and this place of disappointment and stop trying. Don't quit on you. I know it's hard and I know it's uncomfortable and I know it's taking longer than you thought it should. And you didn't think you'd have to go this way. You didn't think you'd have to feel this pain, but you do. So push through it. Push through the disappointment. Push through the discouragement because your dream is worth fighting for. It's worth you showing up for because if you don't, nobody else will. There's so much attached to it. Your destiny's attached to it. Your children, your children's children, your community, the people that you are called and assigned to, they're counting on you being found faithful and stewarding your dream. Don't let disappointment destroy it. If this has encouraged you, please share it with a friend. Subscribe to this podcast so that we can stay connected. I look forward to chatting. So until next time, do you to the max. God bless.